Hey guys, I came prepared today. You notice I have my rain jacket, I have my umbrella, just in case I should need it, in case there's any rain. I actually love rain, and I just, if I have an excuse to wear my rain jacket and have my umbrella, I like to be prepared, because I just, I love to get it out and I love it if it rains. I don't know if there's any rain where you're watching this, but I am ready, just in case there's any rain. And hey, like where we left Jonah, at the end of our first story yesterday, we left him in the ocean, remember? So he needed a whole lot more than an umbrella and a rain jacket to help him out. He was in some serious trouble when we ended our story yesterday. Remember, he had got that message from God to warn the people of Nineveh because God wanted to show them mercy, but he did not want to do it. He didn't want to warn those people, and so he had run away from God, and now here he was in the ocean and in big trouble. Remember, it looked like he was going to get what he deserved. The storm had stopped, remember, because he'd been thrown overboard, and so God had stopped the storm, but he was in big trouble. He probably thought, I'm going to drown. There was nothing for him to hang on to. He was just in the middle of the ocean, completely by himself. He probably thought for sure he was going to drown. And all of this trouble had come to Jonah. He was in this situation because he had chosen not to obey God in the first place because he had run away from God. It was his sin that had got him in this trouble. And you know what? That's kind of always how it works, isn't it? Our sin always gets us into trouble. It always brings us sadness and hurt to everybody around us. It's our biggest problem. And I know it is for me and it is for you. It says that in the Bible. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Our sin separates us from God. It is a big problem. Maybe you have the problem kind of like, I had this problem a lot when I was your age. I still have this problem sometimes where you look at other people or other kids and you think, well, I'm not like that. I don't do all that stuff. I'm really good. I'm a good kid. I'm not like that. They're, they're always getting into trouble. They're always breaking the rules. I'm not like that. And then you kind of think that you're better than everybody else which isn't true, is it? And it's a sin. It's just having pride to feel like you're better than other people. And it's wrong. Or maybe you've had a problem before with what you do when you're angry and how you handle being angry. Maybe instead of handling it a good way, you sometimes yell really mean things at people or throw things or you hit people. That's a sin too, isn't it? That's wrong. Sin is just such a big problem for us and it always causes us trouble, which is exactly what happened to Jonah. It was his choices to run away from God that had gotten him in this trouble and here he was in big trouble in the ocean and thinking that he was gonna drown. But God loves to show mercy. Now remember yesterday, what did we say that mercy is? Do you remember what we talked about? Yeah, it's God showing kindness that we don't deserve. Mercy is kindness we don't deserve. That's what God loves to do, and that's what he was going to do for Jonah. So as Jonah was there in the middle of the ocean, suddenly out of nowhere, God sent this huge fish, and it just whoosh, swallowed Jonah up. He was swallowed by this fish. That's what it says in the Bible. The Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah. And for a second, Jonah might have thought, I must have died. I've got to be dead because he just didn't know what had happened to him. But he was not. He was alive in the belly of this fish. Maybe God did a miracle for him. I don't know. But even though it was probably not the nicest place to be, I'm sure it was nasty in there. It probably smelled terrible. Maybe there was like seaweed everywhere. So can you with me like hold your nose and pretend like you're like peeling this like seaweed off of you? That's probably what it was like for Jonah in this fish. But it was God's kindness to Jonah. This was his rescue for Jonah. Instead of him drowning, God had rescued him with this fish. It was God's rescue plan for Jonah. You know, God has a rescue plan for you and for me too. And that is his son, Jesus. 
That's what Jesus did for us many, many years ago. God sent his own son, Jesus, into this world. Jesus grew up, he was a man, all the time he lived here, never did anything wrong. He was God the Son, and he always obeyed God. And God sent him because he loves us so much. Jesus came here so that he could die to take the punishment for the wrong things you and I have done. Jesus was nailed onto a cross that was made out of wood. He gave his precious blood there to pay for the wrong things that you and I have done. And after he died, he was buried, and three days later, he came back to life again. That was God's rescue plan for us. Jesus said that about himself. He said about himself, behold, one greater than Jonah is here. He was God's amazing rescue plan for us. And God had a rescue plan for Jonah too. This time it was this huge fish swallowing him and rescuing him from drowning. Now Jonah was in that fish for three days and three nights. Can you count to three with me? One, two, three. Three. Yeah, that's a long time to be sitting inside a fish. He didn't really have anything to do during that whole time except think. And that's what he was doing. And I think Jonah probably thought about how God had shown him kindness and not allowed him to drown in the storm. I think he started thinking about what God had actually told him to do which was to send that message to the people of Nineveh. Maybe he started thinking about God's mercy and he started to think about his own choice to run away from God and not do what God asked him to do. And as Jonah was thinking about that, he decided to pray. So wherever you are, I want you to stand up and like get down on your knees like you're praying. And you can go like this, like you're praying like Jonah did and I'll say the first part of the words of Jonah's prayer, and then I'll point like this, and you can repeat after me what Jonah said in his prayer, okay? So Jonah said, when I was in great trouble, I prayed to you, God, and you heard me. Yeah, good job. And then Jonah said, you put me here in this place because I didn't obey you. The waters were all around me. I almost drowned, but God, you saved me. As I was about to die, I remembered you. How can I thank you enough for what you have done? I will obey you. I will do what you tell me to do. Jonah realized God was right about his sin. He needed to stop running, stop hiding, and he had to admit what he had done was wrong. He had a change of heart. And you know, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus, that's exactly what God wants for you too. God wants you to confess your sins to him. That means admit it, stop trying to hide it, stop trying to run, and realize that God's right about what he says about your sin. That's our verse, our memory verse for today. Remember it says, he that covers his sins will not prosper, but he that confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. That's what God wants for you. Maybe there's some times where you make fun of people and laugh at people and you think, well, that doesn't really matter because I'm just laughing at people with my other friends, but those people that I'm laughing at, they don't hear me, so it's really not that bad but you know it's not something that God wants you to do. That's something to admit to God, to stop trying to pretend like it's not that bad, to stop trying to hide it, and to realize God's right about it, and let his mercy change you. Or maybe there's something that you've done and nobody else knows about it, and you know it's a wrong thing to do. And you think, I've got to hide this. I've got to run from this. I can't let God find out. I can't let anybody find out. But God always has mercy for you. There's always a chance to, tr to try again, to start again. And so when you admit it to God and you stop running and stop hiding and you realize he's right, he, you can let his mercy change you. And there's always mercy for you from Jesus. That's what Jonah realized. That's the change of heart that he had. And he stopped trying to run and he stopped trying to hide. And he admitted what he had done. And when he did, God heard Jonah's prayer. 
way down in the ocean in the belly of that fish, God heard him. And listen to what happened next. This was also something crazy. The Bible says God spoke to the fish and the fish swam toward the dry land and threw up and threw Jonah out onto the dry land. It says that the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah up and he was out on the dry land again. And can you imagine he probably just lay there like feeling the ground again and maybe he went oh, and took like this breath of fresh air. Can you do that with me? Take this breath of fresh air. Oh, he was probably so thankful to be alive, to be out of that fish and to be on the dry land again. He was safe. God had rescued him. And Jonah had experienced God's mercy and that experience of God's mercy had changed him. How about you? Have you experienced God's mercy? Has it changed you? Jonah needed God's forgiveness and you and I need God's forgiveness too. You know, Jesus says in the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's life that goes on forever in heaven. That means, believing in Jesus means you understand you've done wrong things. You know God's right about that. It means you believe that Jesus died for you to take the punishment for your sins, that he was buried, that he came alive again. And it means you trust in Jesus as the only one who can save you and rescue you. Maybe that's something that you want to think about. I hope you think about that. If you've never made that decision, that's a choice you can make today to trust and to believe in Jesus as your savior. But maybe you have already trusted in Jesus as your savior. And then I hope you remember what we talked about today, that God wants you to confess your sins to him, to admit to him that he's right about your sin. And then you can let his mercy change you because there's always mercy for you from Jesus. So let's pray right now as we end our story and ask God to help us remember that. And you can pray with me. Dear Lord, I thank you that we can admit our sin to you and that you have mercy and forgiveness for us. And I thank you that you can change us through your mercy. And I pray that you would do that for us every day. In Jesus' name, amen.